I'll go next. Um, so you've heard some of my story, um, but I am uh, the only woman on the panel and probably the only animal producer here too. Um, so I'm going to kind of gear my talk to that a little bit. So I had an advertising, you went back to the earlier story of I had an advertising and marketing firm. And um, the thing I liked about that the most was getting, learning about new products. I sold everything from corn nuts to fire engines, you know. I mean, it was just, everything was new and different, and I'd have to start from scratch and learning it. And that's what farming is all about. Um, I got into it kind of backwards. Um, my 12-year-old uh, daughter died, um, my only child. She died of a brain tumor. And that changed both my husband and myself in terms of what our priorities were in life, as you might imagine. And so uh, after a few years, we continued with the advertising agency and um, just kind of, you know, one foot in front of the other for quite a while. And then we looked at each other. My husband's an artist, and um, I've always grown things in the backyard. And I said, let's buy some property. Let's, you know. The end, the end of marketing, let's, let's do this. And our timing happened to be pretty good because it was 2000. And at that point, we had a lot of dot-com type clients and uh, things were kind of downscaling on that side too. So we were very lucky and you've heard luck being a big <laughs> part of all of this. So you can make your own luck. One of the ways I make my luck is to reclassify ads. Now it's Craigslist. So I looked in the classified ads one Saturday, and there was a three-line ad for a piece of property with a house on it. And I went, oh my god, it's actually affordable. And it's right around the corner from where we're renting, and this is great. So um, I called up the guy and wound up buying this property. My husband was in New York at the time. And so I called him up and said, hi, honey, I bought a farm, <laughs> and uh, literally. And um, anyway, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's exactly how it happened. Negotiated the whole thing myself and everything. So for you women, <laughs> you know, we, we do that. You know we do. So um, bought the farm and then went, hmm. Well, when we were in Italy, I saw these cashmere goats, and they were really cute. I've never been around livestock in my whole entire life, but we got all this property now. We need something to eat it down. So I went up to Montana. I called the woman in Italy, said, where do I get cashmere goats? She said, go to Montana. Went to Montana, got the goats, brought them home, and uh, thought, okay, now I'm a rancher. And uh, where we were renting, they had some little, they had sheep, big sheep, really big sheep like they have here. And I thought, well, you got some goats, you might as well have some sheep for your farm, right? So I went online and I found, I said, well, there's these little sheep, and it was a heritage breed, and they were very rare. And I thought, well, I could handle those. Those other ones were kind of intimidating. So um, I got two of them. And then I thought, okay, I've grown vegetables in the backyard. What the heck? It's, it can be easy. So I did what everybody else has said, which was to start small. It was a little quarter acre piece of the land. And I went out there with my shovel, ready to go. And they went, oh shit, it's a quarter of an acre. <laughs> but I did. I dug it up and I planted a, one of everything and watched the gophers take them down like this. So I got a couple of cats for the gophers. And uh, then we got a livestock guardian dog, which these guys met when they came out. And livestock guardian dog, we got wound up with four of them to take care of the um, coyotes that were there too, which I didn't know about coyotes either. <laughs> Anyway, long story, um, so grew one of everything, saw what would grow in our little, very bizarre microclimate. We're six miles from the coast, but where we are, we also can grow incredible tomatoes. We have to put our strawberries and peppers on plastic, which I learned about. I took Laura's class, I learned about growing vegetables. But my marketing background was really what saved me, which was do the market research, find out what your customers are looking for, um, test the waters with, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, I unfortunately didn't know Scott at the time, so I wound up doing, you know, 70 different crops. I still do 70 
or 80, I don't know. I, whoever counts these things. I do a lot of different crops. But what everybody else has said as well is something that's really important is you've got to keep yourself amused. You know, this is damn hard work. And 70 hour, 80 hour work weeks are going to kill you if you're not having some fun at the same time. Animals bring fun to me. Um, I use my sheep now. I now have a hundred of the sheep. We lease them out to vineyards. They, they make more money for us than vegetables ever will. Um, I sell the lambs for $500 to $900 each at, you know, six, three months old. You're never going to get that on a meat market. Um, I use the wool to make comforters. I sell those for up to $400. You know, I'm not rich. I'm not making lots of money. But every little thing helps pay the mortgage. Um, anyway, uh, back to, so I... The first thing we did was to go to a farmer's market, thinking that's what all farmers do, right? So we went to the one in the uh, downtown in Santa Rosa. And my, uh, I think he was 12 at the time, my nephew came with us. And we're doing bags of salad mix, you know? And we got the bags and we're weighing them out. And it's 50 cents, please, and a dollar, please. And my nephew turns to me and he goes, you know, A.D., which is what he calls me, Aunt Deborah, A.D., you know what you need is heavy lettuce. <laughs> and I went, whoa, that's how icebergs started, you know? I mean, it weighs a lot more per pound than anything else, and people like it. So I was like, you, you know, who needs marketing? This kid, he knows what he's doing. So anyway, then uh, we got some chickens, and of course I had to research what's, the, what's an unusual chicken, and so we got the, what were Americanas, or Aracanas, or now Americanas, and they lay blue and green eggs. And, People still love those. And, um, pasture raised was always something we were doing. And, um, then, it, let's see, what else came along? Uh, grain. So went to UC Santa Cruz to visit my other nephew, who's now farming in Kansas. And there was some kid down there who was all into wheat. And you've got to grow wheat, and this is so much fun. And, um, came here, and Leonard was growing wheat. And it looked like it looked pretty. So I thought, wow, I grow some wheat. So I looked and remembered in Italy that the rarest wheat there and the one that I liked the best was um, farro, which is emma. And it's an ancient wheat, and I thought, well, that'll be fun. So threw some seed out there, and damn did it if it didn't grow. And then it was like, what do we do with it now? We need to dehull it. So now we need a dehuller. So we had to buy a dehuller, and we had to buy it from China. And, this stuff goes on and on, but it's been fun, and it's a learning experience. I'm now involved with a big uh, co-op up in Mendocino and Lake Counties that are doing all kinds of artisan grains. So I thought, well, in addition to the uh, farro, I want to grow some things that bakers can use for their bread. And I know I like sunflowers on my sunflower seeds on my bread, so we're growing sunflowers and we're growing flax. So um, all of this is to, by way of saying, who said, follow your passion, and Kevin, follow your passion, do what amuses you, don't put all your money into it, however, and I believe very strongly in the diversity, the idea of having animals, vegetables, minerals if you can find them, um, strike oil, do, you know, whatever you can to have a lot of things. And yes, I'm the kind of person who likes to have a lot of balls in the air. Some of them drop, but most of them I'm able to juggle and find time to enjoy myself because that's what it's all about. Okay. Ooh.